Have you ever came across a beautiful picture on Instagram that looked amazing only to find out later that it was actually a digital render? Today I will show you how you can easily achieve such a stunning result and elevate your renders to the next level of photorealism. In this tutorial we will focus on creating realistic renders of static products and Lego models, however the techniques I will share are applicable across various niches making this video useful for all Blender users. First thing we need to do is to model the thing we want to show case or download it from the internet. Then we need to give it a texture. We can do it by importing an image of such a texture or use some PBR materials. The other road we can take, if the thing we are making is simpler, is to adjust the material settings ourselves in the shader editor. We can change settings like roughness and other properties and material types like translucent or transparent to get the object to look properly. In case of our LEGO models it is really simple and easy, because we just need to use the Mechabricks add-on and it will take care of the base shapes and materials. It will automatically set the material to look like shiny new LEGO bricks. But what if we don't want our object to be shiny and new? Here come the dirt textures like scratches, fingerprints, dirt, dust, hair and others. They are super crucial for making the final image look real because in the real life all objects have such imperfections and it's a big mistake not to add them. Integrating them is simple, you just plug them into the principled BSDF node and it works. There are also some other methods to achieve it, like procedural materials or texture painting. I haven't tried them yet, so I can't really recommend them to you, but they seem to be more advanced and better. And again, in our LEGO example, everything is taken care of because of some kind people that thought about it and added it to the Mechabricks advanced add-on, which includes all of these tiered textures and integrates them seamlessly into Blender workflow but if you are not fully satisfied with the default textures you can upload your own. And here the lego part actually ends because the next techniques can be used for all different kinds of scenes. The next step is to set up the lighting properly. We have two different techniques we can use and keep in mind that photorealism means that we are trying to replicate the real life conditions. The first one is HDRI which is the foundation for most of the scenes that are not strictly meant to be a photography studio environment. It is perfect for outdoor scenes and requires minimal effort to look right. I made an extensive tutorial about it, so if you think the HDRI will fit your scene vibe, you can go and watch it. The second technique is to use lamps that we can place ourselves. This gives us a lot of freedom, but it's also more complicated. In most cases, we just need the main lamp to illuminate the scene and the second weaker lamp to make the shadows a bit brighter. This setup gives us a studio lighting. If you are interested in this light setup and how to set it up properly, I also made an incredible tutorial that shows all of the little secrets and nuances of it and you can find it in the description. Another important thing is the intensity of the light and to get it to not be too bright or too dark and there is a trick to get it right every time and I showed it in the previous tutorial too. We can mix both those styles to get the best from both worlds. We can get the reflections and the mood from the HDRI and highlight different parts with the artificial lamps. But there is one more technique that can add more realism to your scene and it's about placing an object in front of your lamp. Cast shadows on your scene. In real life it's really common that the sunlight that comes through the windows has some leaves or trees shadows in it. So this technique tries to replicate this in Blender. We do it by plugging an image into the lamp using nodes and it's called Gobos. Now we will move to the camera. As earlier we need to use real life principles and rules to get it to look real. And before we move further, remember that Blender camera is like a normal camera but you can tweak everything with no limits. First step is to learn the basics of cameras, photography and cinematography, like camera settings and what they do composition and the basic camera movements. Here is the list of things you would ideally need to know to understand cameras better and have a good foundation. First we have the exposure triangle. It's mainly about how bright the image is and it's crucial for real cameras, but in digital renders we can adjust it later in post-production, using the exposure slider or by adjusting the intensity of the lights in the scene. Composition is about where the main object is in the image. In most cases you would put your model in the middle of a frame or on one of the first lines using the rule of thirds. Lenses and its focal lengths determine the zoom of your image. 
First we have wide angle lenses up to 35mm, then we have normal lenses around 35-70mm to 70 millimeters, with 50mm being a standard and telephoto lenses over 70mm to make a super zoom. Then we have the focus and depth of field, it blurs the background and we can adjust it in the camera settings. Next we have the frame rate and resolution and the most popular ones are the HD and 4K and the frame rates are 24 for cinematic look, 30 for normal projects and 60 if you want a super smooth video and have a fast PC. The final core thing you would need to know are the camera movements. We have different zooms, pans when the camera moves on a tripod and tracking shots when we move the whole camera on a track without any zooms or tilts. But in the end you can combine them all to create a unique and interesting shots. Next we have render settings. This point ensures that everything is set properly to maximize the realism of the final render. The main thing you need to do if you are going for photorealism is to switch from EV render engine to cycles. And then all of the other things are just optional and the default setting will give you a nice result. But if you want to optimize it and cut down the render time from long couple minutes to couple seconds, you can watch my last video about how to speed up the Cycles render engine. If you are enjoying this video so far, you can subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one. Ok, now we move to the final point which is post processing. I will show you my quick workflow and how I go about editing every render I make. First, we need to adjust the brightness and lighting using sliders such as exposure, contrast, highlights and shadows. It's important now to decide on the style you want to go with and understand what each adjustment does. Alternatively, you can use the auto settings available in programs like Lightroom and they provide a good foundation to adjust the remaining settings. Many professional artists use this as a baseline though you may need to make additional tweaks for optimal results. Then after lighting comes the time for color adjustments. Here in most cases you would want to increase the vibrance a bit which is a smarter brother of saturation and maybe adjust the white balance to get the image to be warmer or colder. Real life cameras that don't cost fortune are pretty shit compared to the Blender Ultimate camera. And on images made in real life we often can see a grain. It is a bit similar to how a not denoised image look but not really. To get this grain effect on our render we need to add it manually in Lightroom or Photoshop. To further enhance the realism we can make the grain appear only on the dark spots like in the real life using Photoshop and its blend if option. For images which are supposed to be shot outside and with a visible light we can add a lens flare by blending a texture of it using layers. Next little thing we can add that is present in a normal photos are some lens distortions like chromatic aberration. We do it in filters in Photoshop. The final thing we can add is the vignette which makes the corners of the image darker guiding our eyes to the center. In summary to make photorealistic images we need to focus on every little detail and make it look random and not perfect and when we combine those imperfections with the photography knowledge we get a really nice renders. 